Hey there, everybody. Hello, and welcome to Relax Mail. All right. So today we are talking about what happens when you have an, you come across an obstacle, whether it's expected or unexpected. How do you approach that obstacle and the and a mindset shift that could actually help you get past it? everybody hello and welcome to relax mail thank you very much for taking the time uh, to to watch and uh, and hear about this this mindset shift this is um, what happens when you come across a, an obstacle whether that is something that is expected say you know that you are that there's this uh, this issue at work that you're fixing to have to tackle and it's you've done everything else you can and it's time to get this big project done and something you just really don't care to have to mess with, but you you know you're gonna have to. Or say something unexpected happens. Say you're diagnosed with um, with some type of debilitating disease or maybe even uh, you get hit with uh, the dreaded C word, cancer. How do you react to that specific problem? Uh, are you, do you just stop and, and shut down and stop stop responding? Or do you actually decide, you know what? Let's, I'm not going to make this problem. I'm not going to be identified by this issue. I am. I accept that I have it, and I'm going to go on. Uh, these are two different types of mindsets, uh, and one leads you to uh, an area of misery, while the other one actually will take you to the uh, to a whole different level. Uh, to uh, helps you to to. Take that obstacle and just t blow right past it like it's nothing. So, obstacles. The way I like to look at obstacles is they're doors. All right. Uh, some people like to look at obstacles as if they are, uh, as if they're they're boulders or roadblocks or things like that. Now, if you want to use the boulder analogy. Uh, that's that's a good one also, but I, I like doors because we know we know about doors. We've run into doors. Uh, I literally have run into doors. So you can. We all have encountered a door, and a door is a great example of unexpected uh, an unexpected barrier, an obstacle, because these obstacles uh, you may be expecting the door to be open. You walk up to it and it's shut, okay? But you don't just shut down and 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 decide your life is over because you come across a closed door. You go on ahead and see if there's a way past that door. You get past that obstacle. You get past that barrier. What do you? How do you approach a problem that is a door? All right, let's use an actual door. All right, so folks. Um, like I said, barriers are a lot like a door. I mean, this my, my door, it's kind of a worn out door, but it, it's a door nonetheless. Several different ways that you can do this. You can just try walking through. And it could just open wide, right on up. Or you may end up coming up and just bounce off the door. You bounce it off, bounce off the door, then you know it's latched. So you might want to come along and check the door handle and see if it's open if it is hey congratulations congratulations you're able to get in but if it's locked and you can't get in then you're gonna have to find a different way around now for me it may be if i, I happen to have a key so i can just go in uh another example of that would be i might have to go if i lock the keys in the house and my door does have a habit of locking by itself just for sheer giggles so I may have to go around the house to actually unlock the door. So and to be able to unlock the door, I may have to come in through the back door and come through the house to open the door up. So there's always more than one way that you can get around, get past a door. It's locked, all right, we've got another barrier, unexpected barrier that you have to approach. So what do you do then? If it is locked, all right, well, 
um, do I have a key? Yes, all right, well then we know we can unlock it and on we go. We already have, a key is a good example of, I have already accessed, hit, come to a barrier like this before, I already know how to tackle it. So you may end up doing something very similar to that where you come up to a door, you like, all right, and it's, you rattle the door, door knob, nothing, it won't turn, you reach in your pocket, pull out the key, because you know you have a key, you've done this before, put it in the lock, turn it open, and away you go. It was no big deal. Now, if you don't have a key, all right, how do you get past this door? If it is locked, if it's locked and you don't have a key one to be able to open this door, um, there's several different ways you can approach that, that obstacle you can kick it open all right that might work it may be it may have a, a maybe a security door and it's got bars on the side so no matter how much banging and crunching and and kicking and hauling and screaming and battering rams it takes it's not going to open all right you may end up having to use a battering ram or you know whatever it is and you that security door may not flex at all it may it may not even budge so how are you going to get past it then well Another way you might do is go see, is there another door open? So you may have to go around your house or down the hall if you're in an office and, and go from entering that, that supply room or that, uh, the, the kitchen from the back door. There is usually more than one way to, um, as we, I like to jokingly say, there's more than one way to defer a feline. So, um, which expresses the you know, more than one way to you know, scan a cat perfectly. Um, Doors to us uh, are no big deal. I mean, we uh, are used to doors and uh, our life obstacles are just like that. And if you have the mindset that that obstacle is nothing more than a door, then you're going, it, it's not a big deal. It's an inconvenience. Yeah, yeah, great. I don't have time for this. Nobody didn't get, they got no time for that. You know, <laughs> as, uh, as it said, uh, there's, when you take, uh, when you approach the, the, the door problem as just being a minor inconvenience at best, or at worst, I mean, it's, you're going to get around the problem a lot faster. You're going to have a more of a can-do attitude. You're going to have more of a mindset ready to tackle the problem. When you have, uh, when you attack that problem with that uh, type of gusto, you're not going to be stopped nearly as bad and you're not going to be stopped nearly as hard as if you come to the door and you go, oh, it's locked. Well, darn it. It's over. Don't even try anymore. If you allow a problem to define who you are, you're going to become that problem. There have been instances of people who fight, say, Parkinson's. They find out they have Parkinson's and six months down the road they're wheelchair bound and uh and needing constant assistance while somebody else at that exact same time may have been diagnosed with the exact same parkinson's disease and is still is able to run you know a marathon five miles or five years down the road the difference isn't that he's got a stronger immune system it may have a little bit to do with it but it's not the main issue the main issue is that one guy gave up while the other guy refused to let it win. That there is a deal to mind, the whole mind over matter. Now, one thing about obstacles is a lot of people, if they, let's, let's use the, the boulder. So all of a sudden, <laughs> this giant boulder has landed in, in, uh, in the way. How do you, uh, what happens if uh, you, you have that boulder. A lot of people think they need to tackle that whole boulder. I mean, just get that thing. They may decide, hey, I'm gonna chip away at this thing and start chipping, grab a hammer and a chisel and start hammering away until that giant boulder is nothing but rubble. And in reality, you don't need to conquer the whole thing. You just need to get just enough to get by. So if you're, instead of taking a taken so much time that and get so focused on hey I'm going to beat this problem instead of all right I need to get past the problem 
because there's also those people who become blinded by the fact that they there is this problem and they so they be, uh, obsess over the problem and they completely forget what their whole objective was why did they run into this boulder to begin with well they wanted to get to town well all of a sudden town's not nearly as, uh, as important as as getting rid of this boulder so instead of uh, when in all reality, you don't need to worry about the boulder. You just need to figure out a way of getting enough space between uh, on the road so that you can get your car around the boulder. So that you can get on down to the store. Somebody else can worry, uh, who's more qualified, somebody else can worry about that boulder and get it out of the way. You just need to get to the, you just need to, have to figure out how to get to the store. A few good questions you want to actually ask yourself when it comes to uh, it comes to obstacles. Um, three good questions to ask when a pro uh, when you're approaching an obstacle that was unexpected or unexpected. Three questions you want to ask yourself. Number one, how would I be acting if I got past this goal or past this obstacle? If I got past it, how would I be acting? All right, you got uh, hit with Parkinson's. If I was hit with this uh, with this. Uh, Found out that, uh, that I have uh, Parkinson's, say. Um, ask yourself, how, sh how should I be acting now that I have, know that I have Parkinson's? Well, give up is one, or I'm not gonna let this thing beat me, I'm gonna beat it, is another. You can decide, how are you gonna act? You, that, and that is all completely within the realm of your ability to, uh, to control. You have the control of how you're going to respond to the action. There, as I've said before, there are two ways. You can either react to an issue or a problem, or you can respond. Now there's, ask yourself, well, it's the same thing. No, actually it's not. Two different things. You can respond, listen, to, use it in a medical term. Um, if you have uh, given a shot, which is better? that you were responding to treatment or you had a reaction to treatment. Kind of say difference, all of a sudden it's like, oh, ha, ha, you want to respond. Because when you're responding to a treatment, you're getting better. While you have a reaction that's, a, you've had a side effect, you've had a, an allergic reaction to, uh, to, the, uh, to, the pro, uh, to the medicine that was administered. So you can either react and go, oh my gosh, I'm gonna die. Or you can go, all right, this changes nothing. I may have to change my diet if it's, you know, like say diabetes or, uh, or some type of uh, pancreatic issue. But uh, it, you can choose to either allow this, allow a unknown obstacle or even a known obstacle to define you. Oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to survive getting past this, you know. You know you're fixing to have to do, you know, a, a doctoral, uh, your, uh, your, um, oh, what is the, uh, your boards uh, for, for whatever professionals, a bar exam if you're going to be a lawyer. You know, you know these are, there's these huge exams that you have to do somewhere down the road. Now you can either obsess about those exams or you can just accept that those exams are going to be part of the problem, uh, a upcoming issue, and so you address them when it's time. You prepare. For them, and if they if it's something unexpected, like you know, you find out you have cancer, you re, you respond to that uh, to that actual uh, uh, to that actual uh, uh, diagnosis. Another que the second question you want to ask is, how would I be thinking about this obstacle, or how should I be thinking about this obstacle? Because you can realize, even if you step take the time to actually think that and step back from yourself for a moment and go, how should I be actually at thinking about the fact that I have cancer or that I have, um, or my child has been uh, uh, diagnosed with uh, type one diabetes. How should I be, what should I be thinking? How would I be thinking about this if I, uh, if I, this, if I was to get past this, uh, this whole uh, obstacle? How would I be thinking uh, to get past the bar exam? You can actually put yourself in the future. It's called, a lot of people call this visualization. How would I be acting? How would I be thinking? Um, 
what would I be doing? These are all visualization exercises that help you be able to, to see that this is not going to affect me nearly as bad as I want as I think it's going to. And if you'll if you take the steps to actually uh, to keep from overreacting and to accept that this uh, accept the the issue at hand as being just that an issue, you're not going to have nearly the problem as you actually originally would think. Now, first time, the first thing you hear, you might go, "Oh my gosh!" You may actually re react to the uh, to the uh, to the problem, but you can actually you can actually take the time to stop yourself from you know uh, from overreact and to think that the world has come to an end. You can stop that. You can change your mindset anytime you like. And then the third one, as I mentioned before, is what would you be doing? when you got past this obstacle. So what would I be doing when I got past this boulder? I'd be going to the, going to the uh, store. What would I be doing when I get past the, uh, this bar, bar exam? Well, I would be uh, having my own firm. Uh, what would I be doing if I got past this, uh, this cancer? I would be doing, I would be breathing deeper every day and enjoying every second of life. You see, you can change your mindset. Just because something happens to you doesn't mean you have to shut down and go, oh my God, my life is over. Another item about uh, looking at an obstacle is ask yourself, what are the long range benefits of this? Uh, Tony Robbins asked a really good question. What makes this problem excellent? Now that'll really change it and make, make people look at you, especially if I got cancer. Oh, well, what's going to make this problem, what makes this problem excellent? Well, you find out you've got, uh, say, uh, say, cancer. Well, it makes you realize that, hey, you want to you wanna cherish life a lot more. Uh, your child has, uh, a, uh, has type 1 diabetes. Makes you work. Diabetes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You realize that your child, uh, you find out your child has type one diabetes. Then that means that you find out, uh, you, it gives you the opportunity to live life on a cleaner level. You may start eating a lot cleaner, start eating uh, simpler foods. Instead of having a whole bunch of highly processed uh, uh, meals, you may end up, you know, making your own bread. Um, you may start making your, which I mean, it's really bad if you, for diabetic, but you know what I'm saying. Um, you might start uh, having, uh, you know, eating simpler foods. Uh, don't, not so many uh, heavily processed food items. Um, there are a lot of long range benefits to an obstacle. The biggest one is that you learn how to get around this obstacle. This door is locked, all of a sudden you are handed a key once you get inside. Once you get past that, key, that door, you have a key. You know how to get past that door. Whether it's you go around to the back door or you go through a window, <laughs> which I've done. There's, uh, there's a lot of different things, uh, a lot of different benefits that actually come about when you conquer an obstacle. So don't, if you ever come across a problem and, that, and you see uh, something and it just is, Un, you know, it looks to you like it's an insurmountable mountain. It's you realize that that insurmountable mountain that it looks like is actually just a hill that has some really low clouds. It may not be quite as bad as you originally thought it was going to be. So as you go about your day and next to the rest of your week, and you come across a problem, ask yourself those three questions. So what does this make? Uh, ask yourself these three questions. What would you be thinking if you got past this obstacle? What would you, how would you be acting if you got past this obstacle? And how, and what, <laughs> what would you be doing when you get past this obstacle? And don't forget to always look at it as this problem is actually an excellent uh, lesson to learn. So there you go, guys. Um, obstacles are not nearly as bad as you think. They're actually a good learning tool. Uh, they can be inconvenient, yes, but it allows you 
to be able to see the world in a whole brand new level and brand new light. So go about the rest of the day and when you come across an obstacle, ask yourself those three questions. Um, if you have any questions about it or any thoughts or, or uh, any other ideas about, uh, about that whole concept, uh, leave them down in the comments uh, below. Um, if you uh, like this, uh, like this video, uh, click the subscribe and if you want to know every time I put one up which is I usually try to release a new video every Friday click the bell icon to be notified hey there's a new video coming out so uh, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, to watch the video and uh, we will uh, talk to you more later till then